Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. Spread the word, oh man. Spread the word of the sand. Oh, fortunate one. Paradise must be won. Paradise must be won. Each day and each night. Through darkness and through light. Cry it out to the world. Spread the word. Spread the word of Islam. Beware of the magic of this world. The magic of this world is so strong that it takes us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by Allah, I'm not asking you to leave this world. I'm not asking you to stop doing business. I'm not asking you to stop marrying. I'm not asking you to stop eating food and enjoying your life. What I'm asking you to do is to stop being worldly. The sixth thing, my friends, is that when you preserve your Iman, it gives you safety from hypocrisy. This is why Rasulullah said in the authentic hadith, he said, whoever prays 40 prayers with the takbiratul ihram, with the opening takbir of the prayer with the Imam in the mosque, then two things are written for him. He is innocent from two things. The first thing he's innocent and saved from is the fire. And the second thing he's innocent and saved from is hypocrisy. The seventh benefit of preserving your iman is that when you preserve your iman and it just so happens that you're unable to do that good deed at one instant or the other, if that so happens, then even in that case Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write the good deed for you. It is for this reason that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said in the authentic hadith in Muslim, إِذَا مَرِدَ الْعَبْدِ أَوْ سَافَرَ كُتِبَ لَهُ مِثْلُ مَكَانَ يَعْمَلُ مُقِيمًا صَحِيحًا Verily, if a believer travels or he is sick and he used to do some good deeds beforehand and he's unable to do that because he's traveling or sick, it is written down as if he did it. Because this is the benefit of preserving our iman. The eighth benefit of preserving your iman, my friends, is that if you preserve your iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a good death and a good ending to your life. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Verily those who say Allah is our Lord, ثُمَّ استقاموا, Thereafter they remain steadfast and preserve the iman and their belief upon this. تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels descend upon them at the time of their death. They say, قَالُوا أَلَّا تَحْزَنُوا لَا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Do not be afraid, nor grieve. وَأَبِشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ And take the glad tidings of Jannah that you have been promised. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا We were your helpers in the life of this world. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِ أَنفُسُكُمْ And for you in the hereafter is whatever your hearts desire. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ and for you is whatever you ask for. Nuzula min ghafoor and rahim A beautiful dwelling from the most honorable, the most forgiving of hosts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ninth benefit from preserving your iman, my friends, is that it gives you shade on the day of judgment and ultimately jannah in the akhirah. Have you not heard what Rasulullah sallallahu said from the seven people who will be given shade on the day of judgment? is a man whose heart is attached to the mosque. His heart is attached to the mosque because he preserves his iman. And he preserves the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him to worship him. My friends, iman is not just a belief in the heart. Iman is a belief in the heart. And the statement of the tongues and the action of the limbs. 
by the ijma of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, by the consensus of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Al Bukhari, rahimahullah, he said, I met 1,000 people, meaning 1,000 scholars in my time, and I heard all of them saying that truly Iman is a belief of the heart and statement of the tongue and action of the limbs. So a person who doesn't have action of the limbs cannot be a believer. A person cannot just say, I'm a believer. And he does not pray, does not fast, does not do anything. And he expects to enter Jannah. This person is not a believer. He is only fooling himself. Truly such a person cannot be a believer. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said in the authentic hadith, he said in the body of a believer, إِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ لَمُدْغَةِ Verily in the body is a, is a morsel of flesh. إِذَا صَلُّحَتْ صَلُّحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ If it is pure, then all of the body is pure. وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ And if it is impure, then the whole of the body is impure. What is that piece of flesh except the heart? So my friends, we come to the topic of our discussion today, and that is how do we preserve our iman in the 21st century? I have some general advice and then I have some specific advice. My general advice is to do 10 things. The first thing to do to preserve your iman is to constantly renew and recharge your iman and your belief. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِذْ يُوحِي رَبُّكَ إِلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَنِّي مَعَكُمْ فَثَبِّتُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And when we revealed to the angels, be with the believers and give them steadfastness because they have believed. Be steadfast with those who were steadfast on their belief. So here we find that if you keep on struggling with your soul to be steadfast and to renew your faith with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then truly you can protect your iman. There are many ways of practically renewing your faith with Allah and your pact with Allah. Some of the ways could be, for example, doing Hajj and Umrah numerous times. Some of the ways could be doing a secret act of worship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. That no one knows except you and Allah only. Some of the ways could be that you would stand up in tahajjud in the middle of the nights and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So renew and recharge your faith constantly. Even when you feel that you're away from Allah, Come back to Allah and you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming back to you faster than that. The second way to protect your iman is to make doing good deeds a habit. Make it a habit. Make doing good deeds a habit. Some of the ways of ensuring that you make good deeds a habit is for example to use small reminders. So if you start the car for example, near the speedometer put a small snippet that says, Read one page of the Qur'an and keep a Qur'an in the car. Or keep a tafsir, a book of tafsir in the car. And keep a snippet there. Something reminding you to say something. And you could do the same thing in your rooms. When you walk into the room, perhaps in the door you could have a snippet. And perhaps in the mirror you could have a snippet. And perhaps when you open the cupboards you could have a snippet there. Reminding you to do things. And one of the most beautiful things I used to love about Saudi Arabia when I used to live there was the fact that after every one mile or so when you're driving the car, there would be a sign that says, Allah, remember Allah. Or a sign that says, Salli ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And wallahi, this would allow you to make it into habit. And this is extremely beneficial. The third way to protect your iman, my friends, is to leave doing sins and anything that will lead to it. Closing the doors to fitna is part of our belief. Close the doors to fitna as much as you can, my friends. If it is internet that is causing you to fall into haram, then remove the internet from your homes. If it is the dish that is causing you haram, and you got the dish in order to look at an Islamic channel, but then you ended up looking at haram things, then just get rid of the dish. You have to do drastic things in order to achieve good results. Sometimes this is the only way of doing it. Closing the doors to fitna is an essential part of preserving our iman. The fourth thing my friends, the fourth way of preserving our iman 
is to make the Qur'an a part of your life. Go back to the Qur'an. Attach yourself to the Qur'an. When was the last time you read the Qur'an? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the authentic hadith, truly the Qur'an will either be an intercessor for you or an intercessor against you. Truly the Qur'an will either be a witness for you or a witness against you. Ask yourself, would the Qur'an be a witness for you or against you? Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quotes the Prophet sallallahu saying, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّي إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Oh Allah, my ummah has taken this Qur'an as something to be forgotten. They have forgotten the Qur'an. When was the last time you used the Qur'an for anything other than barakah? When was the other time that you used the Qur'an to actually gain knowledge from it? When was the last time you read the Qur'an to understand it, not just to finish it? Go back to the Qur'an, ponder over its meaning. One of the best things that I did with my families, which benefited me tremendously, is that I would put the tafsir of the Qur'an near my bed. And I would tell my wife, we are not allowed to go to sleep until I have read a verse and it's tafsir. And she has read a verse and it's tafsir and we share what we understood from it, then we sleep. By Allah, this keeps our relationship so strong. It preserves our iman. And by Allah, within a year or two, we finished the Qur'an and it's tafsir from Ibn Kathir. And we did not even feel it. And this is how you preserve your iman. Courage it takes to stand up for what you believe in. Courage it takes to be true and righteous. Courage it takes to dare and answer. Your questions, be they social, political, economic, educational or religious. To get clear and convincing answers. Test your courage and question me in the dwarf. Dare to Ask, next on Peace TV. The fifth way to protect your Iman, my friends, is to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve your Iman. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Ya muqallib al-qulub, Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik, O the turner of the hearts, Preserve my heart on your deen. Remember my friends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Afa'aminu makra Allah. Do they have a guarantee that Allah will not mock them? Fala ya'manu makra Allah illa al qawm al khasirun. Verily no one takes a guarantee of the mockery of Allah except those who have already lost all good. Do you have a guarantee Allah will not turn your hearts away from Islam? Do you have a passport to Jannah? Wallahi, we do not. And so do not take a guarantee Allah will not mock you. Rather ask Allah to preserve your heart and not to change your heart away from Islam. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and reminds us to make dua. And he tells us as in the Quran, Rabbana la qulubana ba'da id hadaytana. Oh Allah, do not turn our hearts away from Islam after you have guided it and have had mercy upon it. The sixth way of preserving our Iman, my friends, is by preserving Allah and His rights and His duties and His obligations upon us. Because the Prophet ﷺ had said, Preserve Allah, Allah will preserve you. If you preserve His right to be worshipped, if you preserve His hudud and His punishments, if you preserve His obligations, His prayer, His zakat, and fasting and charity, if you preserve all of this, then truly Allah will preserve you. Preserve Allah and you will find Allah wherever you go. Just like Musa والسلام, found Allah wherever he went. Meaning that Allah was with him by his knowledge. 
Inni ma'akuma asma wa ra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa and Harun, Go both of you to Fir'aun. Verily I am with you, I hear and I see. Meaning I am with you with my knowledge. Also my friends, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa continued and he said, Ta'arraf ila Allahi fi rakha ya'arifuka fi shidda. In this authentic hadith in Tirmidhi, he said, get to know Allah in your time of ease and Allah will remember you in your time of difficulty. Remember the story of Yunus alayhi salatu was salam, the prophet that went away from his people. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَبَقَ إِلَى الْفُلْكِ الْمَشْحُونَ And he went on that wretched ship. فَسَاهَمَ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُدْحَضِينَ And the ship was becoming shipwrecked because of the great storm that was coming. So it was taking on water, so they had to throw things overboard. Until they even had to throw people overboard, so they put their lots. And unfortunately his name came up to be the one that was thrown overboard. So he was thrown overboard. فَالْتَقَمَحُ الْحُوتُ وَهُوَ مُلِيمُ so the whale came and ate him up whilst he was sinful. Then what did Allah say? فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ And if it were not that he used to worship me and remember me in his time of ease, لَلَبِتَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبَعْثُونَ I would not have answered his dua and I would have left him in the belly of the whale until the day of judgment. And look at the example of Pharaoh who did not remember Allah in his time of ease, so Allah forgot him in his time of difficulty. When the walls of the water were crushing down on Pharaoh, at that point he said, Amantu bi Rabbi Haruna wa Musa. I believe in the Lord of Harun and Musa. At that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not accept his shahada from him. Why? Because he said, Al-an, now, wa qad asayta min qabl, and used to disbelieve, and be haughty and proud before, and used to be from the disbelievers. So Allah did not accept his repentance and his dua for safety in his time of need because he forgot Allah in his time of difficulty. So preserve Allah in your time of ease. Allah will surely preserve you and remember you in your time of difficulty. My friends, the seventh way of preserving your iman is to go back to the greatest of the scholars and the oldest of the scholars and the ulama and the students of knowledge in your land, when your heart wavers, go back to those people who have been known in the community to be steadfast upon their religion, on their deen, and strong upon their belief and on knowledge for years and tens of years. Go back to them. For truly when you go back to them, your hearts will feel soft and it will feel strong again. In fact, it was an amazing incident an amazing quote that I came across from the books of Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, who said, وَكُنَّا إِذَا اشْتَدَّ بِنَا الْخَوْفِ وَسَاءَتْ بِنَا الظُّنُونِ وَضَاقَتْ بِنَا الْأَرْضُ أَتَيْنَا أَتَيْنَاهُ أَيْ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَابِ تَيْمِيَةً And we used to, whenever we were afraid, and when we used to think we had doubts in our mind, and the world had become constricted for us, we used to come to him, our teacher, who? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. فَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا أَنْ نَرَاهُ وَنَسْمَعَ كَلَامَهُ فَيَذْهَبُ ذَلِكَ كُلُّهُ عَنَّا So it was not only that we saw him and we sat with him a little while and all of that fear and that uncertainty and that weakness and that wavering of the heart would go away from our hearts. Allahu Akbar. وَيَنْقَلَبُ إِنْ شِرَاحٍ وَقُوَّةً وَيَقِينًا وَتُمَأْنِينًا and he will be replaced by purity of the heart and strength of the heart and firm belief and peace and tranquility in the heart. This is what we need, my friends. When we waver in our faith, go to those more established and tell them, my friend, oh my sheikh, I need you to be a friend for me today. Lend me a ear. Just listen to what I'm going through. I just need to lay it off. I just need someone to advise me. And wallahi, you will feel better when you do that. And it will preserve your iman, insha'Allah ta'ala. So whenever you feel weak, go back to those more established in your community, in your family, in your society. And they will give you firm and strength in your belief, insha'Allah ta'ala. The eighth way 
out of the ten ways of preserving your iman is to practice having patience. Because truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَهُ وَلَا تَعَدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَى هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطًا Verily, have patience with yourselves, with those who call upon your Lord in the morning and at night. And do not turn your eyes and your attention towards those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them the destruction of this world. And truly they will be within that destruction and led astray. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us to be patient and to practice patience because truly the patient ones are the ones who are successful. The ninth way, the ninth way of preserving our iman is constant dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because truly Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, the example of the one who remembers Allah and the example of the one who does not remember Allah is like the example of the living and the dead. The person who remembers Allah is the one who is living. The person who does not remember Allah is the one who is dead. So constantly remind yourself of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very easy, on your tongues. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may preserve your iman. And lastly my friends, stay away from oppressing people. Do not harm people. Do not oppress your families. Do not oppress your families. Brothers, do not oppress your wives. Sisters, do not oppress your husbands. And parents, do not oppress your children. And children, do not oppress and do not disobey your parents. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For verily the one who oppresses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove all protection from him. My beloved friends, I have an advice and a parting advice for preserving our iman with our families. I would ask every brother, every husband to be wary of the fact that your families also need to gain Islamic knowledge, also need their iman preserved. It may be easy for you to preserve your iman by easily going to the mosque and seeing the prayer happening and listening to a few verses of the Quran. But your wife in your homes, in their homes perhaps may not have that luxury. And as a result, they feel away from Islam. Do your level best to give them every opportunity to remember and remind and to gain knowledge. Do your best to give them every opportunity to have a good circle of friends. Encourage them. Help them in this and truly no one will be the one who reaps the reward of this except yourself. Also my friends, my brothers and sisters in Islam, my parents, I would urge you to be different parents to your kids, to your children. Do not be like how perhaps our elders, may Allah have mercy upon them, may have sometimes dealt with us without truly knowing what is going on in the world today. And by Allah, they did not do this out of a desire for anything except good for us. But they did not know how the world has changed. Let me give you a timeless advice that will help you preserve yourself and your family and truly the relationship that you have between yourself and your children. The timeless advice is the advice of Ali radiallahu anhu. And this is something that should be written in gold. What is the advice of Ali radiallahu anhu? His advice to parents was, for the first seven years, play with them. For the first seven years, play with them. Allahu Akbar, play with them my friends. Then the next seven years, teach them. And then the next seven years, be their friend. Allahu Akbar, what a beautiful advice. If only we implemented this advice in its pristine simplicity, we, we could avoid so much of the problems that we have nowadays. Yet, we do not follow this advice and as a result, our children unfortunately take other people as their protectors and their helpers and as their guides and as their advisors than their own parents. Remember this timely advice, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve you and your families 
and your loved ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you stronger in your belief and in your faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise you higher in the levels in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause you to enter the Jannah of this world before the Jannah of the Akhirah, the Jannah of this world, which is to love Allah and His Messenger more than anything else. And this is the true key to entering the Jannah of the hereafter. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve the community of believers and Muslimin and to make them true examples and to make them the change that they want to see in the 21st century by preserving the Iman in our day-to-day -day life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Subhanallaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu Allah illa illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Friendly message by Dr. Zakir. The Islamic bomb. Islam comes from the Arabic root word salam or salam, which means peace. It is also derived from the root word silm, which means to submit your will to Almighty God. People worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs. They fail to realize that the Islamic bomb the bomb of peace has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Brahma Sutra of the Vedanta is Ekam Braham, Yutya Naste, Nehna Naste Kincha. One God, common beliefs. Bhagwan Eki hai. Authentic references come to common terms as us and you, which is the first term Allah na la illallah that we believe in only one Almighty God. Doctor Zakir Naik. The common Hindu says that everything is God. We Muslims say everything is God's. G O D with an apostrophe. Relationships reinforced. If we can solve this difference of apostrophes, the Hindus and the Muslims will be united. Dr. Zakir highlights the vital common teachings of Hinduism and Islam to bring Hindus and Muslims together in similarities between Hinduism and Islam in Truth Exposed starting from this Thursday at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Solution for humanity. Who is going to take care of the wives? Why God created us? What this cosmic energy? The religion is the solution for the things happening all around the world. Jihad does not mean any war fought by any Muslim. Jihad basically means to strive to struggle. The Hindus and the Muslims will be united. He is not.